a special presentation of O. Henry's The Last Leaf, a parable for Easter. immigrants and artists like myself. The artists came hunting for north windows and 18th century gables and Dutch attics. The immigrants came for the low rents. story brick building with my sister Susan. On the floor beneath us lived another artist, Mr. Verlaine, an obstinate, irritable old man. But beneath his crusty exterior, I knew a gentle and caring man who for 50 years dreamed of painting his masterpiece, but could never put on canvas what was in his heart. Unseen stranger called pneumonia brought fear and death through our small district, touching one here and one there with its icy fingers. It took from my sister's tiny, frail body her immense love of life, and finally, even her will to live. Fine, miss. He's just a bit shaken. You know this man? Yes. He lives in my building. I'll, I'll take care of him. Oh, it's good. all right. Mr. Verlaine, it's not important. They're yes, apples. it is important. Why? You shouldn't even be out in this weather. I have to be. Why? I'm working, carrying vegetables and fruits for Mr. Schlosser. He pays me a dollar. Can a dollar be worth more than your health? It is not just one dollar. Then what? To me, it is paints, canvas, brushes. Life before art. That's what you're always telling me. Now I'm going to go tell Mr. Schlosser you're coming home and you're going to get some rest. Plus, you promised you'd tell me about Rembrandt today. Oh, chérie, we will talk about Rembrandt later. I have to finish my work. Comprenez-vous? Good and tough for Eileen. Great. How is Susan today? Um, better, I hope. The doctor's with her now. You need more lemons, Rob? Yes. And maybe a couple of oranges, too. Okay. Mr. Schlosser, Mr. Verlaine has been working. Oh, that doom cop. He makes me crazy. 
The only thing that was keeping him alive is that painting of his. Did Da Vinci carry apples for eight years to paint the Mona Lisa? <laughs> you forgot to weigh these. What way? They are for your sister with my compliments. Wait, wait. I give you your money now. Hey, you go home now. But I have not finished my work. You are finished when I say you are finished. Now you take it. No, no. Now you take No, no. Please, get him out of here. Renoir has his paintbrushes strapped to his hands because he can no longer hold on to them. I should do the same with my keys. I'll help you get comfortable. No, no, no. I look after myself. You take care of your sister. Don't forget, you promised to tell me again of Paris and Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Leonardo. Verlaine. How is she? I'm afraid she's no better. What are you going to do? I know the power of medicine against pneumonia. And I know the power of one's will. That little lady has made up her mind that she's not going to get well. Oh. Susan's 14 years old, doctor. She doesn't want to die. I'll look in on her in the morning. Give that to the druggist and give her sponge baths about every half hour through the night. Good day, Miss Brady. They're falling faster now. Three days ago, it made my headache to count them all. There were so many. Now it's easy. There goes another. And now there are only seven left. Only seven what? Leaves. The wind blew three away last night. Can I wait till a bit later, Mrs. McCleary? I don't like to leave my sister alone for too long. She's no better then. Oh, this reminds me of my cousin, Claire. Oh, she was sick just like your sister before she slipped away. Yes, it was a cold, wet fall, just like this. And I suppose you want to ask me about the rent. Well, you did say that you were waiting for the money to come from the book illustration you did. That was last week. I know. But it hasn't come yet. Well, I'm a, a very patient woman. And as Christian as they come, I have my troubles too, you know. I'm a poor widow whose only income is from this building, you know. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure the money will be here by next week. Oh, that's what you said last week. You keep a watch on that sister of yours. Well, there's one day 
we should be glad you're not outside. They're falling faster now. Oh, Susan, I used to watching that dying vine. Wind. It's so strong. These last few leaves, they struggle so hard to hold on to the vine. <coughs> But in the end, it doesn't matter. The last leaf falls just like the first. Susan, what are you saying? I just have to wait for the last leaf to fall. It's a, it's a stormy night. I, uh, now is a good time for your lesson? I don't think so, thank you. Susan is worse? Yes, and I can't reach the doctor. Then you are doing all you can do. Uh, I have here my poor Paris sketches. Come in. Merci. This is the opera. When you get to Paris, you'll see. Oh, it's so far away from here. It's so peaceful. Peaceful? <laughs> Not the opera. Oh, she keeps watching the leaves on that vine outside of the window. Leaves. These are leaves. Look, it is the bois. I was sketching Mary. She's she sure that. Beautiful. Pink bonnet. When the wind blows that last leaf off the vine during the night. She told me I had a masterpiece in me. You haven't heard a word that I've said. She's dying. What? She wants to die. She's obsessed with the leaves on that vine outside of her window. She thinks that when the last leaf falls off the vine, she's going to die too. That's foolishness. That girl has so much to live for. Paris! Oh, talk to me about Paris. I don't care about Paris. Don't you see? Don't you see? Paris is a dream. This is reality. Tonight is reality. I'm sorry, Mr. Verlaine. I know you're trying to help. You're a kind man. Kind? <laughs> I am not kind. You are giving up just like your sister is giving up. I may be a failed artist, but I know talent. It is a gift. You must not waste it. Go call your doctor. Monsieur Verlaine. You look somewhat improved, my little friend. You lie poorly, Mr. Verlaine. You're young. The whole world lies ahead of you. You must fight. I don't want to fight anymore. I'm tired of being a burden. Don't say that. Why do you let such foolishness come into your head? Look at me. Look at me. I too thought I was a burden on Marie. She thought my heart was a gift from God. She was wrong. But you, you're young. 
And soon, the two of you will take a trip to Paris. You will study dance. And your sister will paint. You must fight like that vine. Have you noticed how it grows from a crack from the bottom of the wall? Think of that determination. I'd always hoped to capture that vibrance in a painting. Such will to live. Like my Marie. But Marie died. And mother and father died. And after struggling through that wall, the vine will die. Susan, you must not be afraid to live. I cannot paint. Mon âme, paint what is in your heart. But it is not my heart that moves the brush. I am at best. A common artist. I cannot be made a master. But we are all artists, and every deed we do is a stroke in our painting. And remember, mon amour, that the greatest portrait of all time is the life of a common carpenter whose love and, and sacrifice changed the world forever. Look at the children playing. Oh, and the color of the trees. Oh. The leaves are beginning to fall. The greatest portrait is the love and sacrifice of a common carpenter. Every deed is a stroke in our painting. I'm gonna get you something to drink, Susan. Please, Just Joanna. Pull up the shade. No. <clears throat> I'll be right back. Please. Just lie still. Just lie still. Please. I'm sorry, Miss Brady. I meant to be here earlier. Another case downstairs. So happy to see you, Doctor. She had a very bad oh. night. All such goings on, my sainted husband must be turning in his grave. What happened? Well, the old man's gone. What? Valine, your French friend. He died this morning. Oh, no. I could have told you that. <laughs> I know 
that he'd been sick. Yesterday he went out in the rain. Apparently he was out more recently than that. His coat was soaked through. I said, need no doctor to tell you that. Well, he'd, he'd lost his marbles, that one was, completely. In all that storm last night, he was out with a ladder and his paints, and I found his pallet in the alleyway. They found a lantern, still lighted, and a ladder that had been dragged from its place and some scattered brushes a palette with yellow and red colors mixed on it. It was weeks before Sue noticed that the last leaf never fluttered or moved when the wind blew. It's Mr. Verlaine's masterpiece. He painted it there the night the last leaf fell.